Now that we have a general idea of what a linked list is, I want to focus specifically on a node in a linked list. And from the previous video, we know the different parts of a linked list. We have the instance variables, which are going to be the value or the data stored inside of the node, and what is its next memory reference that's going to be the next node in the chain. Because this is a one node linked list, the next value would be null, meaning there is no more. Also, our list node is going to have methods that go along with it. We're going to be able to get the value, get the next memory reference, set the value, and set the next memory reference. And lastly, we're going to have the constructor that allows us to create a list node. And also, I put my linked list up here. We're eventually going to get to the point where we can search for nodes, add nodes to the list, take away nodes from the list in different ways. But before we can do that, we have to understand how a list node works. So this is what a list node would look like in Java. The first part is the value. And I used strings for my linked list. So it's going to be a private string, and we're just going to call it value. The other part is a reference pointing to the next node in the list. You might think it's weird that you're creating a list node inside of the list node class, but it is completely legal and legitimate in Java. Next are the methods. The first method is the constructor, which is simply allowing us to say, what is the value and what is the next node that's going to be created in our linked list? And then we have our getters, which we're going to be able to get the value inside of there. And we're also going to be able to get the reference that's next in the list. And lastly, we're going to be able to set the value inside the list and set the memory reference inside of the list node. Now, this is rather inconvenient, this class is, because these list nodes can only be strings. With the advent of generics, it is far better to create the class accommodating for generics, and the list node can be any type of data. So I'm going to show you what our final list node class is going to look like. We're going to add angle brackets with elements inside, meaning what type of element is it going to be? In this case, it's a string, so you could replace that E with string. So we say instead of value having to be a string, it could be any type of element. It could be an integer, a double, as long as it's an object. We're going to say that every list node that we create is going to be of that type. Again, we say whatever the new value is, whatever type we said it was going to be up here, if it's going to be a string, it would be a string here. And the next list node would also be of the same element. And down here, we're going to take the string, change it for E, simply meaning whatever value that it is, it's going to return that value. Whatever value is, if it's an integer, it'd return an int. If it's a string, it's going to return a string, so on and so forth. We say it's this type of list node. We take out string, add E there. And then finally, we add, hey, if we're going to set a value, the value that we're taking in is going to be of the correct type. So this is our list node class. Now that we have created a list node, we could look at more of how can we add nodes together? How can we take nodes away? It's first and important to know what a list node is for a singly linked list.